hello again to whoever's just tuning in now. So my name's Joan and I'm the sector manager for um, performing arts in Chindana. So on behalf of my team, the sector engagement team and the grants team, I am here on this FB Live taking in um, funding questions that you might have. Um, and actually, uh, I can see my team is actually online as well. So um, if there were very specific questions that uh, for whatever reason I can't answer live, uh, I'm sure they'll type it in the comment section as well, which hopefully you can actually see <laughs> um, because I can't actually see the comments, but my colleague will be sending them to me, okay? So, okay, uh, first question in from Cherkian. Hi, Cherkian, how are you? Hope you're well. Um, I see your question, so I will address that in a bit. I just want to give it another minute or two, okay, uh, for more people to join us, and then I'll start sort of um, answering questions and uh, the ones that people have been sending through over uh, the last few days as well. I hope that's okay. So I'll just just send them through, okay? Um, okay. So I just wanted to give maybe a brief intro about our funding programs before I launch straight into like the Q&A session and just answer whatever you have for me. Um, so at the moment, we have two funding programs open. Um, the, the mobility funding program and also our capacity building funding program. Um, they are the, the, they've been open actually for a while. So this particular cycle has been open since the middle of February and it is actually closing end of this week. Um, and with the intention for projects to actually start uh, from June onwards, middle of the year. So I understand that um, there are a lot of concerns from everyone, um, which I'm sure more questions will come in in a bit as well, in regards to the current situation um, with um, the escalation of um, the coronavirus and how this is going to impact um, project delivery. So I will answer those questions as well. Okay. Um, so... So in regards to Cherkian's uh, first question, um, so you said, will the submission date for mobility and capacity funding be extended? So I know someone else on Instagram also asked a similar question in regards to extension. So on behalf of the team, at the moment, this particular funding program has been open for a while. So we will keep it as that, okay? So we will still close the end of this week, which is on the 29th of March. Uh, we understand that um, there are many things that may have affected your um, project planning and there may be changes, we understand. So what I would say is, if you do have changes at this point and you have already submitted, okay, already submitted, please do um, fill in the form again, um, submit again and mention new implementations that you may have. For example, if you're doing it digitally or you're changing the format of um, how you're going to deliver this program, please um, send in again. I would strongly advise. Um, for those who at this point is um, struggling to finish application form because you have pending details, like for example, um, for mobility, I suppose, right? So I think um, many platforms, projects, shows are put on hold. Um, if you are in that situation, just put it in the application form mentioning that um, you don't have these details at this point. Um, and then if you do have other details, please give as much as you do have and submit anyway. The team will later on um, come back to you, okay? So, and as per our usual terms of reference and criteria, should you have any changes to your project at any time in terms of timeline, delivery, you are welcome to please drop us an email. So get in touch, inform us um, what's happening now and what kind of changes till when. Okay, so please do get in touch with the grants team. 
Okay, if you uh, submit your application, you will hear from the grants team um, as a follow-up. Um, however, if say a lot of you are actually doing work or projects um, towards the last quarter of the year, October, say through to December, and at this point, there may not be um, any sign of changes at this moment, please do submit anyway. Okay, so I would advise that. Hopefully that answers um, that question. Okay, if you have more questions, you can also send it through. So, um, someone else question too. Um, is there a criteria in terms of audience or audiences present? Um, do you mean like whether it needs to have a physical audience? Is that what the question is? Um, so... Like I mentioned earlier, in, in uh, response to the current situation, um, just give us in your proposal or in your application form how you would deliver this program. Should it be virtual or digital and online? Please articulate that. Um, again, as per our usual criteria, give us a target number, roughly how many people you would like tune in, log in, you know, attending the physical event anyway. Um, and also um, your target audience, who you would like to actually um, have actually attending this. So is it students? Is it um, other professional practitioners in the scene? Is it like um, families and things like that? So those are just our standard criteria anyway, okay? So next question. Uh, is there an urgent fund that can be offered to freelance artists during this COVID situation? Okay, so we understand that um, many people um, probably have the same thoughts, same questions, and um, would like to take this opportunity to ask Chindana. I understand. Um, so I just want to address this and say, yes, we understand the situation. We understand um, with the current sort of uncertainties around the world that has greatly impacted the arts and creative industries um, in Malaysia, especially freelancers, um, people whose work heavily depends on like gigs, exhibitions, um, productions, shows, and any type of like you know um, freelance artistic services or work. We understand. Um, that you're worried and uh, we actually have created a survey over the weekend I don't know if you've filled that up or seen that um, I would like to urge as many other artists to please fill up that survey because that actually helps inform um, inform us so that we have a thorough understanding of how it's impacting the scene okay so this survey is still available on our FB on Chandana's Facebook page as well as our Instagram um, in the link in bio section so click on that if you have already filled in thank you so much for your input it means a lot and we really appreciate you taking the time to do that uh, rest assured that uh, we are collecting as much data as we can and trying to work as quickly as we can as well okay to present uh, whatever data that we have to collect um, and send that to ministries and institutions and even funders um, in the scene uh, to see what we can do okay so in the meantime though if you have concerns maybe you have a great idea or you know you just want to give feedback or constructive sort of um, you know info or comments please email to info at chandana.com.my we'd love to hear from you as well okay so I would just want to say please bear with us as we try to um, go through this um, period of time and see how best we can work as quickly as we can to help the scene okay so I understand this might be a very popular question and it'll probably come up again but I hope I've addressed that at this point so I would like to um, go back to the main purpose of today's FB live which is actually to address um, any questions that people have maybe it's issues or problems um, as they're filling up our application form okay so, um, yeah, so take the opportunity to ask away any questions you may have in terms of our funding applications, okay? Okay, question three, question four. Hi, Juita, hi. <laughs> okay, due to the current situation, we're now looking at planning for 2021, okay? Would you be able to advise um, the potential opening funding cycle for the next year instead? Okay. 
So actually, if you do go through our terms of reference, which I would like to strongly encourage everyone to please read through these documents, they are available publicly to everyone on Chindana's website. Okay, it's even available in English and Basa as well, so in Malay. So um, please go through the documents, and all the details are there. And as per that document, it actually outlines um, that this year we have two funding cycles yeah so initially now which is cycle one already open and will close end of this week and supposedly cycle two which is supposed to be in the middle of the year for um, end of year projects to maybe quarter one next year so Juita to answer your question at this point I do not have a definite um, opening and closing of when the next year's funding cycles are okay but um, taking into account the current situation and in light of like, you know, um, the progress and uh, we're closely monitoring how things will uh, transpire in the next few weeks and months. So stay tuned. We will definitely share any notifications or any uh, updates that we have on social media first thing. So just stay tuned for that. Okay. Um, so question four, question five from Apris. How about album funding, music video funding? Okay, great question. Um, so at the moment, we have like a mobility and capacity building funding program, right? So I hope people are quite clear somewhat as to what the intentions of those project delivery are supposed to be. Um, however, I can give you a sneak tip uh, coming up that we do have some new funding programs planned this year. Um, for visual arts scene as well as to support the independent music scene. Um, I can't go into too much details at this point because we're still finalizing them, but rest uh, assured that in, um, you know, shortly we will be able to actually share uh, the terms of reference of those on Chandana's website. Um, I do not have a date as to when at this point, but we will definitely be informing you guys via uh, Instagram and Facebook. But yes, a priest to answer your question, there will be um, a music production uh, showcase and even mu music development sort of fun coming right up. So please stay tuned and check it out then. Okay. But in the meantime, if you do have very specific questions, please email to info at chandana.com.my. Email us and we'll send our se sector managers will be able to respond to your specific queries. Okay. So I have another question here. Someone's asked, um, are non-profit organization related to the arts applicable? So is your question applicable across all our funding? Um, if so, yes. We support um, associations, uh, persatuans, you know, you, um, and non-profit organizations as long as the core work that you do, okay, has to be um, in the arts and, and or cultural sector related, okay, because Chindana's mandate is to support the arts and cultural economy, um, creative industries in Malaysia. So it has to be an arts related project program that you want to do. Um, so it cannot be like anything that's non arts related. Yep. Yeah? Okay. Um, next question um, from someone here. I have suggestion and have been suggested uh, to Chandana and the government to change the mobility funding and capacity funding to help freelance artists this year. Okay, this is because there will be uh, no way the Corona virus will be gone um, so quickly. If Chandana is truly concerned about this, think wisely perhaps. Okay, so um, to address this question again. Um, so I don't know if this person has um, logged in earlier. Maybe you've just joined our chat. Welcome. Um, so I will take this question again. So just now I mentioned a little bit about um, concerns for um, the escalation of the coronavirus, right? Um, and especially um, how it impacts our mobility funding moving forward and even this particular cycle, right? So like I mentioned, if you have already received an invitation by a platform whether it's in other states in Malaysia or like out of the country and it is the last um, quarter of the year and if at this point there are no cancellations you should just submit anyway that would be my tip okay um, and give us as much information as you can 
uh, if at this point you cannot produce your invitation or support letter, we will even give you a grace period to actually submit that later on. Email it to the grants team, but send your application in anyway, okay? Um, but to answer the question of that you do have a suggestion and you would like to contribute constructively towards maybe Fortunana's um, consideration to how we um, should we want to adapt to different kind of delivery, we welcome suggestions, okay? So like I mentioned earlier, please drop us an email at info at chindana.com.my, okay? We'll love to hear um, any ideas, any constructive recommendations that you have. We'll be very open, okay? And rest assured that we are internally also already thinking of ways how we can still help the scene. Um, and since these two funding programs are still open this cycle, um, how we may adapt. So that for that, um, actually the grants team um, and our sector, the sector engagement team are already brainstorming and will actually inform people on any updates that we may have. Um, but please bear with us during this time. We are trying to work as quickly as we can. So um, would appreciate um, the, your understanding as well. Okay. So I hope this addresses your question at this point. Um, if you have any other questions, please um, send it through. Okay. So and I'm going to take another question now. Okay. Hi, Joan and Chindana. Hi, Sam. Uh, thanks for the session. And if the event or festival is postponed to 2021, can we use the fund if we are successful in the application for mobility? As there are a lot of uncertainty with the events. Yes. So um, I understand. We understand. Uh, and we hear you as well. Okay. So um, it depends when... Um, when you're supposed to tour, when you are supposed to perform anyway, okay? So if it was, like I mentioned earlier, if it's towards the end of the year, things hasn't really changed, um, please submit as per um, your plans because um, as per our criteria and as it clearly states in the terms of reference, if you have any changes, you're welcome to um, um, submit that. You have to actually inform the grants team, okay? If you are a successful beneficiary, we will actually follow up with you and you have to write in to provide um, any sort of new recommendation changes or new timeline to when you are, you know, doing your project, touring, um, organizing things. So that is subjected to the man management's approval and review as well. Okay, so that's just standard um, protocol, procedure anyway. So no, no problem there. Okay. But due to the current COVID situation as well, we are also internally brainstorming and we'll take into these considerations for postponement. So um, we will actually inform successful beneficiaries as to next steps because we will take into account um, these things, okay? Uh, great, so my colleague Reza, who's our sector manager for music, independent music, has actually answered question five previously. Great. Thanks, Reza. Okay, so another question. Hi, Joan. Uh, do you have tips for the capacity program? How to attract people when all this COVID is over and done with? How do you see people uh, will attend the event in the future? Okay. So, yes, so if your program is happening anyway and it is actually at a later time frame and hopefully, um, you know, the situation would have improved and, um, uh, yeah, so people can actually, the restricted movement order is actually lifted, people can go out again, great. Um, how to attract more people to attend the event, so I would strongly advise you articulating a marketing plan. So, I mean, as per our standard application form anyway, we do actually ask for like marketing um, plan or activities. So, depending if you're organizing a workshop under our, our uh, capacity building funding program, um, just show us what are the steps, you know, that you are going to be promoting your event. Is it you're going to be posting Facebook ads, you know, Facebook boosts for a small amount of like, you know, budget. Uh, whether it is through word of mouth, you're going to share it through various um, 
strategic arts collectives and platforms will be able to share the word that kind of thing uh, maybe you would have um, you know interviews with the press or media so th those are just like action points so um, and a few tips as well as to what we would like to see when we ask for like your marketing initiative or strategy or plan so no matter how simple to how extravagant and how um, maybe your, pro your projects you know um, quite a big showcase um, and you would have a more allocated um, marketing budget so feel free to just articulate it anyway in the application form okay so hopefully that gives um, a bit of an idea um, to that question so I can come back to that if there are more sort of questions on marketing and stuff like that okay so next question from Clarissa hi um, I was wondering as per our capacity building uh, funding how about projects that intersect between arts and sciences? Would this be still acceptable under your defined scope? Excellent question, um, Clarissa, here for this question because um, yes, we do support interdisciplinary as well as um, cross um, sector and even art form kind of collaborative projects. We encourage that as long as it has a majority of an arts and creative component to it. You're welcome to apply to Chinana's funding programs. It is there to support that. We are there to also support, you know, you experimenting and working with different kinds of um, sectors and coming up with, you know, maybe sort of like arts therapy kind of workshops all after this coronavirus. That would be really sound, you know. I think that would be a great project. So under the capacity building, for example, it would be able to um, look into projects like that and it welcomes applications of the sort. So if you have great... Um, ideas you know or um, during this period that you've been thinking about please submit uh, we would like to hear them okay um, uh, oh that's follow-up question sorry I was asking about projects that intersect beyond simply the performing arts visual arts and independent music um, so yes I think I also mentioned that right so I say if you do um, but you need to also be an arts sort of have an arts component which actually does stem from either the performing arts. So performing arts can be either traditional to urban and contemporary, you know, theatre, music, um, you know, um, ensemble works, that kind of thing, to any part of the visual arts spectrum. So you could be, you know, painting, drawing, um, installation works, sculptures, or even working with an in independent mu musician. Um, you have to have one of these components with another sector. Um, under the capacity building funding program, we will consider and look into that. So um, it's not like we will reject the kind of applications, okay? Um, da -da 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 -da, okay. Next question, I think also another follow-up. I would also love to learn about whether the budget, can it be subsidized? Can, can it subsidize a larger budget that would be funded by the organization or absorbed by other resources? Must we show the whole budget or what it is up to the 15k subsidized amount, right? Okay, excellent question. So, um, a brief overview, I suppose. Um, the capacity building funding program has a limit per application of up to 15,000 only, okay? And... Um, on the other hand, mobility funding program has up to twenty five um, thousand as per uh, as a limit per application because that one sometimes involves sort of cargo and you're touring in a big group that kind of thing. So going back to this question, um, whether we whether can it subsidize a larger budget? Yes. Oh, okay. Where you have other funding, right? So okay to address this, yes, um, it is fine to have other uh, funders sponsors come in. Uh, or other you know other budget anyway uh, supporting the overall of your program of course that makes sense uh, we understand that I mean our funding project uh, and the budget for funding programs is like a partial support towards enabling um, everybody's creative projects and ideas to um, help realize them so it is by no 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 means supposed to cover everything because we understand um, there are other factors other things um, you know um, as well involved so yes uh, you can actually apply to other funders other um, you know institutions as well um, that's okay as long as you also just mention it 
who uh, in your application form who are the other funders you are approaching if you are approaching at that point as, and there's no confirmation to their commitment or similarly if they have committed okay uh, we welcome you to actually just state for example this funder whether it's individual or funding organization is committing to you know sponsor x amount for this particular purpose if you can outline that that would be great because i mean chindana um welcomes that and that is fine but then we just try not to have sort of like a cross funding for the same purpose kind of situation so that's where it comes in for you to inform us actually yeah okay um so i'll move on to the next question maybe i'm rambling too much um but i hope at least it gives you an idea of like um where we're coming from and more examples as well yeah um when do you think this COVID will end? Oh my God, this is a very difficult question. I am by no means um, able to actually answer this. Um, I mean, I don't know when it would actually end. I hope it would actually be in a more controlled situation very, very soon, okay? Um, uh, I know it's causing a lot of unrest for everyone. I mean, even ourselves, to be very honest, right? And it's um, affecting a lot of the work that we do, um, the programs that we have in mind. Actually, we have a lot of great, exciting stuff coming out this year. And, you know, it's... It's a problem, I understand and we hear you, um, but I won't be able to tell you when it would end, but I can tell you for sure that we are working very, very hard behind the scenes to actually think of ways of how we can still support the scene and be very active, um, no matter what situation Okay, um, it would end up with whether we would adapt to suit that um, and the needs of the scene, whether it is... Um, um, when the when COVID-19 actually clears up and then we can resume a lot of all these exciting new programs I've been talking about. So um, stay tuned, okay? Stay tuned. Next question. Um, can the capacity building fund be used for public outreach programs that use the arts to improve social well-being and community building? Uh, community building yes sorry um, yes it can okay so actually we do actually have some new and improved upgraded terms um, and criteria to both our mobility funding program this year as well as the capacity building funding program so I don't know how many of you have already gone through our terms of reference if you have thank you so much if you haven't please do so they are on our Chindana website in Dwi Bahasa, in Bahasa Malaysia as well as in English, okay? Um, so, yes, we will open up um, initiatives and efforts that reach, you know, um, uh, public outreach programs. It's meant for um, maybe school students, it's probably meant for uni students or early career practitioners or even, you know, just helping out everyone else in the scene. Uh, we would welcome that. So that is a new um, criteria that we've opened up this year slightly. Um, for that um, and yes as I mentioned earlier um, if you're working with the social sciences um, we would love to hear new ideas that are you know really exciting as long as it also has like an arts and culture component like I mentioned because Chindana's focus is on three sectors at the moment which is performing arts visual arts as well as the independent music scene so it needs to involve at least one of these art forms as well in delivery okay I hope that answers that Okay, moving on to the next question. Um, am I speaking too quickly um, or is this good? Okay, um, let me know if I am or ask another question, okay? And I'll try to answer that. So the next question is for capacity building. If there's leftover funding from this cycle's fund, will it be carried over? Uh, quite sure we have to delay so is it better to apply for the second cycle um not quite sure what you mean by leftover at this point um um so as i mentioned um slightly earlier in this uh, fb live when i started this chat as well that um this cycle has uh, was open in the middle of february and it's closing end of this week so this is the first cycle yes there was initially a second cycle um which is supposed to open in the middle of the year to support initiatives later in the year and onwards okay um at this point i am not able to confirm uh, when we will reopen the second cycle whether there are delays probably you know um or 
or, or not, I don't know. At this point, we will come back to you and actually provide updated notifications. But for now, things are as per status quo as mentioned in the terms of reference and outlined at this point. Um, so if you do have initiatives that at this point are not like entirely, entirely cancelled, it is postponed to a later date and you have quite a bit of, for example, um, details already put together, like you know who your collaborators are, you know you know who are the invited speakers you want to invite, because I don't know at this point whether you are applying as an organizer or applicant, um, that kind of thing. Um, if you have quite a bit of like the structure to your plans already outlined, um, you can just apply anyway. I would strongly advise that um, because this cycle is still open, so you guys have still quite a few days to get it in. Um, and if you do have things that you need to supply later on, um, you can do so, okay? You can actually follow up with our grants team um, and then provide the supporting documents or updated timeline then as well, okay? Hopefully that answers that question. Great. Yes, my grants um, colleagues are also on it. They're in the live chat, so I hope um, they are responding to some of these questions already, okay? Um, uh, great. Okay, thanks, Apika. So, another question. Hi, Joan. Uh, can we submit more than one application? Should we have more than one project? Yes, okay. This is a very, very popular question. Um, so... As an organization, you maybe have more than one project and they may actually even um, apply to different, more than one for, for example, like you have something for mobility, something for capacity. So it's just more than one um, for each funding program or within the same funding program, right? So yes, you can apply more than one um, um, application, one project, okay? But they have to be separate applications. They cannot be in the same one. If not, it will be just too jumbled up anyway. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, so you can, as many as you can. However, though, um, what happens actually after application, after submitting application, it goes into evaluation process, right? Should your both or three of your projects are that outstanding, it's so amazing that all three of them are like actually, you know, um, highly recommended by the industry advisory panel um, and they are like our top um, how to say yeah um, top recommended uh, projects to support we will actually inform you so we're very nice like that the grants team will actually write an email to say hey so, uh, congratulations on um, both your um, applications are successful um, and that um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> um, both your applications are successful and that um, um, actually they're both recommended by the industry advisory to um, be supported. However, Chindana can only support one project at a time though. Um, so we will actually let you know and you have to tell us which is the priority one that you're going to deliver first, for example, or maybe the one that you need more funding on at this point because you do not have other funders confirmed. Um, so it is for you to then tell us which one you want to proceed and you have to drop one. Um, we hope that you understand because with limited resources that we have, we try to support as many people and actually new faces and new players in the scene. So we don't want to always keep funding the same people, you know. Um, we try to spread it out and encourage as many people to apply. And so we hope that you understand that this is a way um, for us just supporting as many people as we can. So we can, if you are successful, we can only support one program per cycle uh, per year. So if you are a successful um, Chindana beneficiary within the same year, um, you cannot apply again as well, you know. Um, if say we open the second cycle and then you haven't finished your project, your project must say, you know, like in the um, delivery um, timeline or you, um, you know, haven't finished it in any way, um, you, we would not be able to actually advance your second application until it is completely closed, then of course we welcome you to apply again in the next year, okay? And the next new cycle, so hopefully that is quite clear, okay? Um, okay. 
Okay, another question here. Any question? Is photography workshop covered under this funding program? Great question. So I would say photography workshop, yes. I mean, photography is an art form under visual arts, which we recognize. So it ticks the boxes for us. Um, it is under an art form that we support. Um, under this funding program so I mean we have two funding programs actually open at the moment so mobility and um, capacity um, generally yes photography workshop in uh, whether it's you attending initially you know and upskilling um, short course somewhere or attending a photography sort of conference abroad or you've been invited actually by an arts festival to showcase your photography work for example somewhere else um yes it falls under the category and you are eligible to apply to our mobility funding program even for capacity building actually there's two um uh, how to say um categories or ways you apply either as an organizer if you're organizing a photography workshop um so that's one yes you would qualify um or and uh, the second way is if you are an applicant um, and for example you know you saw this amazing photography workshop conducting in Penang you know um, by one of the arts collective there and you want to attend you are KL based you can also apply to um, the capacity building that will support you know internal country um, nationwide mobility as well so yes I hope that answers your question in all ways and manners and methods um, uh, yes, so yeah, we do cover that, okay? Um, so I see my colleagues still sending in more questions. Um, <laughs> okay, one's just come in. If we have gotten grant for first cycle and it is done before the second cycle, can we submit again within the same year? Um, so okay so for so to to recap on my explanation earlier as well okay so i think in chinana's terms of reference document it actually outlines it very very clearly okay uh it's very very clear um and it mentions that like this year we have two cycles initially outlined right so the second cycle is to um open up to people within the last quarter of the year to like access delivery so if like um, your project has already ended, so uh, we cannot support the same beneficiary for more than one time within the same year, though. So I think that's quite a clear criteria mentioned. Um, you can only apply again in the next year, okay? This is just so it's um, as, e as fair uh, and transparent uh, a process that we can adopt, okay, to support as many people as we can. Hope that's quite clear. Oh, we can only be granted only one grant, either mobility or capacity building in each year. Um, yeah, so basically, if you are successful for more than one project, um, and it may be maybe across both our funding programs, we will actually inform you. You have to then tell us, you have to choose, unfortunately, which one you want to go ahead, that Chindana can actually support you. It will only be one project um, within a year. For the same beneficiary okay okay um, um another question here why the mobility funding stated late middle of the year um sorry i, I don't quite understand what it means stated late yeah um so i mean initially the timeline outlined in kita punya overview okay is that mobility open now and it's supposed to support um, travel or initiation from the middle of the year onwards. Maybe that's what your question, right? You, you meant kenapa, like, apply sekarang tapi um, June onwards baru boleh travel. Is that it? If it is, um, only because, okay, I'll talk a little bit about our process generally, yeah? So, you see, Chindana's grand cycle was open in middle of February. Um, it will close end of this um, week. So it's always around like um, from February, um, March. So like maybe six weeks or so, you know. Um, and then what happens when it closes, the internal team will just filter, filter applications to see that you actually have all your supporting documents. It's very important. I can't stress this enough because it helps inform us what you actually want to do and where you want to go, right? So, um 
So what happens is the grants team will just filter. Tengok adakah all your documents memang ada kat sana. It's very clear. What happens is we would then advance all the uh, applications with sufficient details and they meet the criteria and the purpose of our funding program, we will advance them all to industry advisory panel. So, bukan cendana team internally deciding, yes, I want to support you or not. So, it's as transparent and fair as it can be. Um, so, to find out who is actually cendana's industry advisory panel, I, ad I invite you to go to our website, www.chindana.com.my at this point to you can find out who they are their faces are there you can learn about who uh, what they do and things like that so we have a representation of um, industry experts and players who have been in the scene they are veterans they are established practitioners who are very active in the scene and been supporting the a lot of the work that um, the scene has been doing okay in Malaysia so they are the ones who would actually give input and evaluate and look into um, the strength of your application. So I cannot um, sort of um, stress more or stress enough that it is down to the strength of your application. And when I say the strength of your application, it's not about, oh, I'm very changi to write, you know, all these big words. It's not about that at all. You can write dui bahasa pun, we accept. You can write in Malay, English, you know, application form kita pun, like in Malay as well. So you can choose whichever um, language you are most comfortable in. So the strength of the application comes and boils down to articulation. When are you traveling? Start date end day you know you will be very surprised many people actually don't even seem to be able to provide us details like that you know so it's very hard for the team to like an evaluation panel to understand like when you know how long why are you doing this you know if you say you want to organize workshop kenapa you know who is it for who is your target audience you know it's maybe people are like you know very um scared with a lot of like these big terms but actually target audience is as simple as like you are organizing this for who? You wish um, students came? Is it other practitioners in the scene to upskill themselves? You know, we want to um, help other people. Is it, you know, uh, general public because you want to also create greater awareness for the arts? Is it corporate funders that you're targeting? You know, you want to invite more corporate funders to actually be aware of the great work that um, the arts is doing, you know? So who is it for? You know, details much of me, we, we need to see them, okay? Um, so I will come back more to like tips like that, I suppose, as I go through other people's questions. So if you have more, you can ask as well, okay? If I haven't already answered. Um, next question. Hi, Joshua. Okay, familiar faces here. Hi. Um, hi, Joan. Thanks for the clear explanations. Um, is Cycle 2 in May also for mobility and capacity, or is it another program in the past development? Okay. Um, thanks, Joshua, for your question. Very sound. Um, so, yes, Cycle 2 was initially also for mobility and capacity. This year, you will see that these two funding programs at this point, okay, is open. So you are right. We previously have what we call the development funding program, and it is also to support across the board all art forms, performing arts, visual arts, and independent music scene as well. However, we are going through a bit of a revamp, okay, for uh, for development funding program. Um, so we are actually making it more strategic this year. So as I mentioned earlier in the chat, I don't know if maybe you haven't tuned in then, we are having some new funding programs coming up. And it is specifically to actually focus and address certain industry gaps and it's to help the visual arts scene and to also help the independent music scene. So when I say the development is going through a revamp, meaning um, these new funding programs that are coming up would actually um, cover developmental works, experimental um, research phases that people may want to embark on, take on. So, I mean, it, it looks different for every art form, of course, right? So um, stay tuned for some of these new funding programs that may be coming up later on. I don't know when we're announcing it at this point. Um, but stay tuned, um, those would be the new version of our development funding program this year. So I hope that answers that. If you have a very specific question, you can actually email um, Chindana, send it in, 
um, to info at shindana.com.my and someone from the team will actually get back to you and um, give you some feedback, okay? Great, Afrika's on it as well. Great, so Afrika's from our grants team. Um, hopefully that's clear, Joshua, okay? Um, that's all the questions so far. So um, I've been jabbering on <laughs> for quite uh, quite some time now um, and answer all these questions that you guys are putting on live. Um, do you think it's covered quite a bit? Um, if you have more questions, you are still welcome to um, um, answer them. Yes, um, actually I'm just checking the time. Um, there's 10 minutes left to 4. Um, this is amazing. I didn't think like I would be still speaking um, this long. <laughs> Sorry guys, um, it's my first time doing an FB Live, right? So um, we would be taking last questions at this point, okay? We will be wrapping up by 4 o'clock. Hope you understand. Um, but maybe saving this video on our Facebook feed. So I mean, if you have friends, you know, who might benefit and have similar questions from this, you can ask them to like check back in later. They can watch this video then. We will not delete it, I think. So yeah, so these are like some questions. Um, okay, so I mean, there was this other direct message that's just come in from Chi Sang. Hi, Chi Sang. Um, I was asking, wondering if um, they'll be eligible to apply to capacity building whilst holding the development funding at the moment. So she sang, as I mentioned um, a few times um, previously, if you are a current beneficiary and you haven't finished your existing projects in whatever funding program that we would have um, dispersed previously, you cannot, uh, I mean, you can apply to another funding program, but we would not be able to advance your application. Um, only because you are still an existing beneficiary, right? You haven't wrapped up your project. We want to be fair. We can only support one beneficiary, an active um, beneficiary um, at one time. So we hope that's quite clear and fair to other people as well. Yeah. So maybe if you finish that project and you have something else, so think think about it. Think ahead already, you know, um, plan ahead. Um, and then when we next call up for a funding program, you can actually apply then, yeah? So hopefully that answers that. Um, great, another question. Do you cover film work? I'm uh, sorry if this has been answered. No worries, Kat. Thanks for sending in your question. So yes, I will recap. Um, Chindana's focus is on three um, art forms only at this point, um, which is performing arts visual arts and the independent music scene only. So um, it's a real bummer that at this point we, we don't actually cover like other sectors um, such as like film or like crafts, you know, or literature at this point. It does not mean that we would not um, look into them eventually later on, you know. We would really hope so, but this is only because with the limited uh, funding that we have, we can only um, kick off with these three um, areas of focus, okay. Um, but we hear you. Um, but also to answer your question though, um, for film work and things like that, we have our fellow um, brothers and sisters and colleagues over at FINAS, you know, um, who maybe would be a better agency and body um, and more applicable to the things that you, you're looking for funding and support. So we would advise you to please um, head over there and find out if, you know, they have anything that will provide support to realize your projects. So, yeah, you know, guys, um, one of the reasons why is because, I mean, some of these other art forms do have other... Um, agencies or ministries looking into them so I would strongly advise you to actually um, find out more with the relevant ministries and departments as well okay um, so another question that's come in hi sorry don't know if you answered this is the arts organization funding still available great question okay so yes the arts organization funding program was one that we introduced um, in 2019 last year so it's new and its intention was to support development uh, of um, um, a lot of the industry um, organizations and companies right that we recognize who are actively doing great work out there and want to grow and actually 
um, gives people different platforms that other practitioners can actually grow and be a part of. So this funding program at this point, uh, we do not have like a definite date when it would reopen again for new applications this year. Because to be honest, when we op opened for applications last year, it was for these companies to do implementations the whole of 2020. So just a, a little tip though, um, when we open our arts organization funding program, um, it is what we want to see is like a mini business plan, you know, uh, for a whole year. What are you going to do with um, that funding? Should you be successful? What are some of these exciting programs, ideas of expansion, you know, that you've been thinking about? You want to take your company to the next level. You want to open new markets and reach out to new audiences. But, you know, you don't have the kind of capital or means to do that. That funding program is to help assist with that. So, I mean, if you do have intention to apply as an organization, then um, so maybe start thinking about some of these questions. Um, you can even drop us an email at info at chindana.com.my. The team will actually get back to you, okay? Um, so that you can start thinking and uh, for future applications, should we reopen? Again, you can be ready, okay? Because just to talk a little bit about arts organization funding, um, it's different from our other grants, which is like these mobility and um, capacity building funding programs. They are more programs based, but the arts organization funding is to um, um, scale organizations, right? So it is kind of like a mini business plan. We want to see um, your execution for the whole year. What is your plan, right? Uh, we will also need at least two years of audited accounts, okay? So you need to get that in place. Some people in the past didn't get to apply because they couldn't put um, or supply these supporting documents in time, so I understand. Hopefully you guys can uh, keep this in mind and actually sub um, you know, be ready for when it comes around again, if it does. Um, so yeah, but more details of the criteria and things like that is still available on Chinana's website, okay? So just click on funding programs, find arts organization. And uh, the terms of reference is there, very, very detailed of what type of companies and organizations what and see if your um the work that you do actually falls under that category, okay? So hopefully that answers that. Another question um are you available i uh, sorry are you able to share what will the amount for the new funding grants be um i am not able to share the um sort of limit of amount that the new uh, visual arts and independent music funding programs will be um, because we are still finalizing the terms of references for those funding program what as soon as they're ready uh, ready to go uh, we will be sharing them online uh, on Chinana's website, you can have thorough, um, you know, uh, you can access all this information um, then. And to be honest, uh, our Facebook and our Instagram will be announcing it first thing. So follow us if you are not already following Chindana's social media platforms. It is the best way to actually um, get news, you know, of like when things are happening and, you know, applications opening. So um, stay tuned then, okay? Uh, next question. Can people apply for capacity and mobility? Can you be successful in both or just one? So briefly mentioned earlier as well, um, if you are successful in both, you can apply more than one uh, application and type of funding program, yes. However, if you are successful for both, uh, more than one, we will, we're very nice, we'll tell you that you, you're, you're, you've been successful for more than one, but you have to tell us which one you want to prioritize. Um, and you have to drop one of them because we can only fund you one time per year um, And then you have to try again the next year. Hope that's clear. Okay. Had a question. Hi, Joan doing uh, during this um, Coronavirus crisis can online art workshop tutorial be eligible um, to apply for any of Chindana's fun um, Mimi is artist in school program. Okay, great. So yeah, I mean, uh, um, there has been some questions as well from people who are in our different various programs that we have, right? So for example, shout out to my uh, arts education colleagues. Um, they have two funding programs. I mean, two programs that um, benefit schools primarily, and it's also to support artists going into schools to um, do great work and actually um, 
provide students with a um, great foundation of like um, arts education, right? So um, just to answer this question, um, during this funding crisis, I've addressed this earlier. If you have any changes to project implementation, please write into Chindana, inform us, okay? If you've already submitted your application at this point for, um, say, capacity building funding program, you have to um, maybe send in again and tell us your new format of delivery. We will review and consider in light of this current situation. We understand. Um, if um, later on, say, you submit, or you submit anyway and it's for a plan A, you know, original version of implementation, um, you can also follow up later on, email the grants team, tell us any changes you have. It's just a standard procedure. You have to email and let us know, and it is for the management to review, consider, and then get back to you, okay? Um, but also to answer your question, um, just, just to also mention, though, uh, if you are an artist in school uh, instructor, okay, um, for that particular program, you can also apply to our mobility and capacity building funding program because um, I've got clar clarification from the management team that the beneficiaries of the arts education programs are the schools themselves and not like individual artists per se. Okay, so it benefits the school students primarily. So that's why you can also apply to our other funding programs. Okay, hope that addresses that. Um, Okay, um, I think, okay, last few questions, guys, da, okay. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, sorry, sorry, I've lost the thread of where, um, oh, that's all, okay. So according to my colleague, that's all. Um, I hope I've addressed quite a number of these questions. I know um, it's very capacity building um, heavy for some reason, I think. Obviously, you know, with mobility and all that, it's a bit, um, up in the air and it's difficult for people to um, you know get a grasp of how they want to still do some of this touring or like you know other kind of invited platforms that you may have previously um, receiving invitations perhaps um, so I understand but if you have any other questions actually you can always get in touch with the Chindana team Maybe not many people seem to know this, but we are very approachable, very friendly, and we have like an open door policy. You can actually drop us an email at info at chindana.com.my. It would be directed to our grants team who would be happy to like answer your email or even pick up the phone and give you a call to talk more about whatever project you have in mind or whatever criteria that you are not aware or you are not, um, it's not clear to you for any reason. But nonetheless, though, you have to actually refer and read thoroughly our terms of reference, the Terma Rujukan, on our Chindana website, okay? Um, you know, it actually is very clear. And as of this year, we have some new updated um, criteria that will benefit everyone, okay? So please do refer there. If you do have, like, anything else that you're not clear after that, like I mentioned, you can actually approach the Chindana team. Some people even would like to set meetings with us, you know, the sector engagement team, which is myself, my colleague Sarah, who is uh, looking into visual arts, my colleague Reza, who looks into independent music scene as well. We are ready to like actually, you know, sit down with you, mm -hmm. talk you through it, or even understand more about the work that you do. So we're very approachable. Um, so is our grants team. So if you prefer a face-to-face -face kind of thing, but obviously in, in light of the current situation, it'll probably be like a Google Meet <laughs> or a Zoom meeting. So we are, we can still do that. So um, so yeah, actually we don't bite. So just drop us an email anytime. Okay, last question from my colleague here who's just sent it to me from, um, uh, from Ruby actually. Hey, okay. Um, I'm applying this grant to seek funding for a particular phase bracket workshops for the entire big exhibition project. How much info do I need to give about the overall exhibition? Um, exhibition, or should I focus all the information provided only for the aspect I am seeking funding for? Okay, I see what you mean. Okay, great, great question actually. So for example, 
if you're doing an exhibition, you're doing a performance, a show, or maybe you're touring, okay? Um, but you have a long, alongside it, a supplementary programs such as um, um, a series of workshops, anything that is upskilling, uh, building people's capacity, right? So you apply to capacity funding. Yes, we will look into that. Um, we can um, consider that as well, okay? Um, but to answer this question here, the, your information, we would like a thorough um, big picture overall. So yes, it would be great if in your project summary, you include what it's all about, all the sub-program or whatever you have, but then you also zoom in to the main purpose of this funding program, right? So you zoom in on your upskilling and workshop series. What is it you want to achieve? What is the project outcome? Do you want to upskill 20 other artists, practitioners, you know, so that they are more aware of certain things, uh, helps them build certain skills, or is it to create more awareness, or, you know, maybe it's uh, to complement your exhibition. So what is that outcome we want to see? So you, um, I would strongly advise that you include that for us. Same goes for your budget um, as well, yeah. So I'll just add this in. I don't know if anybody else asked this earlier. Um, so one of the main supporting documents we need is your... Uh, uh, so a budget sheet this year um, we've consolidated uh, your project timeline and proposal to be on the application form itself so you no longer need those like extra supporting um, documents separately but for budget you still do and for budget it's a lot more clearer this year we hope because we've broken it down gave you examples and like you know boxes that you can fill in details so yes we want to see your big picture spending okay your expenditure for both say your exhibition and your workshop series but then we would like you to also have a separate section only to show us say capacity building aspect berapa you know the breakdown invited speakers each of them token of honorarium berapa venue rental berapa you know um supporting uh, rental of microphones you know pava kind of system berapa Things like that broken down. So yes, we do want to see a big picture just to give us a sense, you know, as well as to zoom in on the relevant details for that particular program. Um, a thorough breakdown according to the funding criteria will be great. I hope um, I've answered that. Okay. Um, so... So yeah, I've answered quite a lot of uh, questions here already. Um, I'm sure there would be a lot more as well. Um, so um, you can either drop us a line at uh, email us at info at chindana.com.my Visit uh, our website, okay, for terms of reference or just drop us a DM in our Instagram and Facebook that kind of thing. We will get back to you. So I would like to say uh, thank you everyone for being um, so, you know, so great in participating in this conversation, this thread. It's been really constructive. Uh, thank you for your time in tuning in and my team who have been online this entire time also addressing people's questions. Thank you so much for your support, for familiar faces as well as new friends. Thank you so much. So I would like to say goodbye. Um, I think we will save this uh, video after it would be on our um, Chindana's Facebook feed. So. If there were any other questions not answered, we'll probably do this again. If this is great, so give us a thumbs up, okay? Um, stay safe, um, keep well, and be creative at home. See you then. Bye.